वेलकम बैक डियर स्टूडेंट्स एंड फ्रेंड्स वी वर डिस्कसिंग चैप्टर नंबर एट ह्यूमन हेल्थ एंड डिसीजेस इन ह्यूमन हेल्थ एंड डिसीजेस अप टिल नाउ वी हैव डिस्कस्ड व्हाट इज हेल्थ व्हाट इज डिसीज व्हाट आर डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ डिसीज एंड वी हैव डिस्कस्ड फ्यू कॉमन इन्फेक्शियस डिसीजेस दैट अकर्स इन अ ह्यूमन इवन वी हैव आल्सो स्टार्टेड विद अ टॉपिक कॉल्ड एज इम्यूनिटी दैट इज मींस अ मैकेनिज्म व्हिच इज प्रोटेक्टिंग यू against the pathogens and infectious diseases that is immunity we have also discussed the two types of immunity one is innate immunity and the second one is acquired immunity we have also discussed how the acquired immunity develops and what is the role of antibody and the role of b lymphocytes and t lymphocytes in development of immunity so now go ahead with the immunity we are moving ahead with the topic that is a immunity we have seen the two basic types of immunity first one is called as an innate immunity and the second one is called as an acquired immunity but there are also another type of a classification in which the immunity can also be divided into two types first is called as active immunity and the second one it's called as passive immunity there are two types active immunity and the second one is called as a passive immunity what do you mean by an active immunity in an active immunity where a host is exposed to an antigen that is a foreign material when a host is exposed to an antigen the antigen may be in any form it may be in a living pathogens or living weakened pathogens or it is inactivated pathogens or you are extracting the polypeptides or the proteins from the pathogens that can act as a foreign material and when a host is exposed to a such kind of a foreign material the body starts to produces the antibody against it the body starts to produces the antibody against it such type of immunity is called as active immunity okay so we are doing the same thing in the vaccinations we will see later on how what we are doing okay in vaccination but what is an active immunity when the host suppose i am the host and i am exposed to an antigen my immunity starts to produce the antibody against it so it can fight with or it can neutralize the antigen which is injected or i am exposed and thus it protect me such kind of immunity is called as active immunity okay active immunity it is a slow process it is not a fast process it is a very slow process because when i am exposed to antigen my body or my immune system determine that antigen the foreign substance and then it starts to produce the antibody and to produce the antibody it takes a certain time and so that's why the active immunity is a slow process it's a slow process clear now in the another type the another type of immunity is a passive immunity in a passive immunity the antibodies are not produced by a body but instead of that here the ready made antibodies are inserted into a host ready made antibody we are taking the antibody from someone else and we are directly inserting or administering that antibody into a host they are the ready made antibodies and you know the function of antibody the antibody has a capacity to neutralize or fight against that foreign material and thus protect the host okay so this is called as passive immunity okay uh like for example i will give you one example of passive immunity we have already discussed it in the chapter number 3 but still i give you an example that you know that in the initial day the fetus has been provided the mother's milk and that initial day of secretion that is slightly yellowish in color what we call it as colostrum this colostrum it's rich in antibodies which antibody i am specifically saying the name that colostrum that means initial days of lactation they have or it is rich in antibody the name of antibody is iga immunoglobulin a ig means immunoglobulin okay immunoglobulin a this antibody they enters into a fetus and provides 
a protection to a baby. Okay, so here in the colostrum, the ready-made antibodies are produced, uh, and that ready-made antibodies are delivered to a host, and such type of immunity is called as passive immunity. Clear? So in an active immunity, the host produces the antibodies, and in passive immunity, the host receives the ready-made antibody. Okay, this is a difference. So in active immunity, it produces, so it takes a certain time to produce. So it's a slow process. But in passive immunity, the host receives the ready-made antibody, so it doesn't take any time to fight against it. Okay, so it, its response is fast. Okay, so this is another type of classification of immunity, active and passive immunity. Okay, from that, we have to learn the one more concept and that is a famous that is called as vaccination or you can also call it as immunization it can also be called as immunization this vaccination and the immunization that usually works on the principle of acquired immunity what we are doing in vaccination or what we are doing in immunization okay so see here how what we are doing we are injecting okay a weakened pathogen weak pathogen or inactivated pathogen or we are injecting the proteins from obtained from pathogen that we are inserting okay into a human host see these are the weakened pathogens weakened they are living but due to certain processes we make them weak or they are the inactivated pathogens or now due to a recombinant technology we can also able to introduce just the antigen okay we isolate the antigen from the pathogen and we just enter that protein part of uh, pathogen into it which can act as an antigen okay so what happens Initially, when first time exposure takes place, this is a first time exposure and you know that the characteristic of immunity, what we have learned in the uh, previous session, that when a first time exposure takes place, that exposure due to that the response is going to be produced is a mild, okay, but during that they learn so the memory cell recognize, okay, and then when a second time exposure takes place, the effect occurs very intensely same thing happens over here in a vaccinations here the vaccine that contains either a weakened pathogens or inactivated pathogens or it contains the protein that is obtained from pathogens that is injected into a host here it's a first time exposure takes place okay and so that's why the response which is produced by the host that is very mild so when you go for vaccination sometime you might have a fever or headache or body ache some mild symptoms are going to occur but what happens during that process when they are introduced our immune system starts to produce the antibody it learns how to produce the antibody against that pathogens okay and it produces the antibody the antibody which is produced by our immune system or the host immune system that fight against the pathogen and kills them or neutralize them. But during this process, the memory cells of immune system, memory cells of immune system, that is a B and T lymphocytes of immune system, it will remember how to attack. They have learned and they remember how to attack. Now what happens? Now if the second time exposure takes place means when the real exposure takes place the memory cells of immune system have already knows it okay, how to attack so the second time the attack occurs on the antigen is very intense and they kill the microbes okay and thus you get so protected so this is the principle of vaccination or the immunization that works on the memory of immune system okay our immune system or the cells of immune system memorize how to kill that microbes or how to kill that pathogens okay so the second time they attack in the same manner 
they don't have to learn and they protect you okay but as i told, told you that it is by a production of antibody so here there is a production of antibody and if it is and there is a production of antibody so obviously the process is slow but we also have certain deadly microorganism which are very toxic certain deadly microorganism that needs an immediate treatment okay then we don't wait for certain time in that case we have to provide them ready made antibodies we have to provide them ready made antibodies like for an example if you see a tetanus okay in the tetanus what we are tetanus is a deadly microorganism that has a rapid lethal effect very fast actions they are capable of producing so in that case we are providing them ready made antibodies ready made okay so the body doesn't have to produce and so obviously the action is very fast even you can also give in a passive immunity the anti toxins anti toxins means they are the antibodies against the toxic materials okay they neutralize the toxic material the harmful material that is uh, administered or that is present in our body so this is called as we can also give a anti toxin or you can see a passive immunity the other example is uh, we are giving a uh, we are treating the snake bite poisoning snake bite to a someone if the snake bite in that case we don't have a time to produce the antibody so what we are administering we are administering a ready made antibodies they are prepared from the venom of a snake okay or a poison of a snake or you can say you can also call it as anti venom okay so that is also example of a passive immunity it's an example of passive immunity clear so thus the vaccination and the immunization works so if the microbe or the pathogen doesn't have a rapid action we are giving them in either of this form we allow a body to learn it and to produce the antibody that will memorize it and in the second time it will do a intense attack and that protect you but if the microorganism or pathogen is a deadly and has a rapid action that we are providing a ready made antibodies like we are providing anti toxins or anti venoms in case of snake bite they are the ready made antibodies okay so thus the vaccination and immunization is possible now i have told you that suppose if you gone to a vaccination when you were small and you have gone to a vaccination the doctor inject a vaccine after injecting a vaccine or so administering a vaccine he says you to your parents and you that you might have a some mild fever or you might have a headache or you might have a lethargy or some kind of or restlessness such kind of a symptoms might going to appear because you know that the first exposure produces some mild symptoms but yes mild but now nowadays there is an advancement of a technology now instead of we are administering a weakened pathogen or inactivated pathogen we isolate antigenic protein from pathogen we just isolate the protein antigenic protein means the protein which have antigen property from pathogens we isolate and from we are just inserting it so the other symptoms which are associated with pathogens that does not occurs and the host who are who is receiving that vaccine doesn't suffers from any other symptoms and that is possible due to recombinant dna technology even due to a recombinant dna technology the production of vaccine in the large batches is possible because ultimately they are they contain some pathogens okay so the large production of that vaccine needs a utmost care and the protections and so but the recombinant dna technology has made it possible like you have to remember the example nowadays we are preparing the vaccine of hepatitis from east okay by the same technique recombinant dna technology where you can prepare a large volumes of vaccines okay so that's all about the vaccination and immunization so here we have finished two important topic first the another type of classification of immunity active immunity and passive immunity and the second topic what we have finished is a vaccination and immunization okay so now let's go ahead
So let's go ahead with another topic, and that is again the important topic. So we discuss its energy. You might have heard this word energy, and what is an energy? Energy is nothing but it's an immune response towards a certain material. What we call it as allergens. Okay? You might have gone a certain new place, and suddenly you have a sneezing. and wheezing and such kind of a symptoms or you have a running nose such kind of a situation might going to occur and that is due to a allergy it's due to a allergy okay so what is an allergy it's immune response but it is exaggerated immune response exaggerated immune response to certain antigens okay it is an exaggerated immune response to a certain antigen the over response of, of immune systems to a, a specific or certain type of antigens they are called as allergy and the response is to a certain antigen that what we call it as allergens what it is called as allergens okay the substance to which we have a allergy the substance to which we have a allergy that substance is called as allergen like many substance some people have allergy towards a dust some people have allergy towards a pollen grain some people have an allergy towards animal dandruff okay so many thing okay even the some people have allergy towards a certain kind of a food so this is allergy particularly milk and milk related products okay so this is this all are considered as allergen if the host consume this kind of a substance a specific antigen or certain antigens their immune system exaggerately responds towards it okay and this concept is called as allergy it is called as allergy so i again repeat what is an allergy allergy it is an exaggerated immune response to a certain antigen okay this is called as an allergy okay the substance towards which the host responds that or it shows the allergy that is called as allergens many substance can act as allergens and it vary from person to a person some people have allergy to dust some has a pollen grain some has allergy towards a animal dander some has also food some has also allergy towards a certain kind of a scents and perfumes okay so this is the allergy okay so this can act as an allergen but these are the common allergens which we can find here there is a role of antibody which antibody play a role in allergy the name you have to remember which antibody play a role the antibody which play a important role in allergy is ige immunoglobulin a this is an antibody which has an important role in allergy okay the allergy which is produced by reactions of an ige antibody it shows a certain symptoms so what are the symptoms that occurs in allergies the symptoms usually reported are runny nose watery eyes difficulty in breathing or redness these are the usual symptoms which are reported in allergy so what are the symptoms of allergy running nose watery eyes difficulty in breathing and redness there are the symptoms this allergy is due to release of chemicals okay which chemicals it is due to release of chemicals called as histamine and serotonin from mast cell the release of these two chemical from mast cell which two cell which two chemicals histamine and serotonin from mast cell that causes the such kind of a symptoms and that is responsible for allergy okay so i again repeat the main antibody that have a role or that play a role in allergy is ige 
the usual symptoms they are reported are running nose, watery eyes, difficulty in breathing, the redness. These are the usual symptoms which are reported in allergies. Okay, it is due to a release of chemical called as histamine and serotonin from mast cells. These are the chemicals which play a role. Serotonin can also be called as what's another name of serotonin? It can also be called as 5-HT, means 5-hydroxytryptamine. This is the chemical name of serotonin. 5 hydroxytryptamine okay so that is also called as serotonin okay and that has a significant role in it like apart from that what is its treatment the generally the treatment includes three variety of a drug first is called as antihistaminic or antihistamine which uh, counteract the effect of histamine Okay, it has opposite effect of histamine, so obviously symptom does not appear. Second one is adrenaline, and this is a life-saving drug in case of an allergy. And the third one is steroids. These three drugs show a beneficial effect in allergy. Which three drugs? Antihistamines, adrenaline, and steroids. Like suppose. Uh, many honeybees bite to a person, what happens? Or when the honeybee bites to a person, what happens? There is a redness and the swelling occurs at the site of biting. Why it occurs? It occurs due to a release of histamine. And it is a kind of allergy. Okay? So what it needs? It needs a such kind of a treatment. Antihistamine, adrenaline and the steroids. If one honeybee bites, no problem. Two honeybee bites, no problem. It can be treated by antihistamine. But when many honeybee bites, suddenly at that time, the goal of the physician or the doctor is to save a life of a patient. In that case, they can provide the adrenaline which saves the life of a person. It is a life saving drug. Adrenaline is a life saving drug in case of allergy. Okay? So that is all about the allergies. Okay, remember it's very important short note that you have to prepare. What is an allergy? Again repeat. What is an allergy? Allergy is an exaggerated immune response to a certain antigen. Not all antigens or not foreign material, all foreign material. It's to a certain antigens. The body produces the responses to that antigens. That substances are called as allergens. Okay, and that may vary from person to a person. Why it is going to occur, that still we don't understand. But it believed that it may be due to some genetic mechanism and unknown reasons that allergy is possible. Dust, pollen grains, animal dangers or certain animal foods, they are the acting as allergens. The allergy is due to an antibody, which antibody? IgE. Okay? And the symptoms of this allergy is running nose, watery eyes, difficulty in breathing, redness okay these symptoms are due to release of chemicals the name of chemicals are histamine and serotonin from mast cell okay serotonin can also be called as 5 HT and it needs a treatment the treatment is you can give an antihistamine adrenaline and steroids okay now one more thing that is left in allergy that is diagnosis how would you determine that a person has allergy to a certain substance in that case, how would you diagnose the substance which is a proposed allergen, a proposed, that is injected in a small quantity into a patient? And if the patient observes symptoms like this, so then we believe that the person has an allergy towards that substance. Okay? And thus we can determine the allergy of an individual. Okay? So how the allergy is Determine the allergy to a certain allergen have been determined by injecting a small quantity of allergens. Remember, a small quantity, very small quantity. Because if the large quantity is administered, then it causes a severe problem. It may be a life-threatening even. It may cause a death. So even small quantity that is injected beneath the skin, in, uh, in the lower part of the skin, and then, or below the skin, and we are checking the symptoms okay thus we can determine the allergy to a certain antigen okay so that's all about it allergy now we are moving or switching over to another topic and that is 
ऑटो इम्यूनिटी ऑटो इम्यूनिटी व्हाट इज एन ऑटो इम्यूनिटी ऑटो मीन्स सेल्फ एंड दिस इज द इम्यूनिटी now all of you know the function of immunity immunity is to protect the body against a foreign material or foreign pathogens okay or you can say antigen okay that foreign material we are calling it as antigen in a scientific language okay so the purpose of this immunity is to protect you against that antigen or foreign material or pathogen okay that is harmful to our body all of you okay that means it is able to identify the immunity or the immune cells they are able to identify which is foreign and which is self okay which one is a self and which one is a foreign means kai vastu apni che ane kai vastu apni nathi bija ni che okay clear the the immune system or the Uh, the cells of immune system they are capable to identify the self and the foreign okay now what happens in a normal circumstances in a normal circumstances the immune cells able to identify a self and foreign and they show a difference between a self and foreign and they attack on foreign or the antigen they attack or kill the antigen foreign material they do not destroy the self cell okay and thus it protect you but if there is a some disturbance occurs or due to some genetic reason or some unknown reason which is still not identified due to some genetic reason or the unknown reason our immune system is not able to identify the difference between self and foreign is not able to identify the difference between a self and foreign and the immune cell starts to attack on self own self our own self okay instead of foreign self at that time they destroy our own self or self cells when such cells are damaged it produces a disturbances in a particular organ okay like suppose for an example if we are transplanting a liver from another person so when we are transplanting a liver from another person our cells of immune system they able to identify whether it's the cells or the liver that is transplanted has my own cell or the cells of other one and if they are foreign they attack it but when it forget the difference between a self and foreign and starts to attack on our own self own then the destruction occurs and this phenomenon is called as auto immunity and many disorders occurs due to it like for an example rheumatoid arthritis remember these are the auto immune disorders rheumatoid arthritis clear जेने अपने गुजराती में संधि वाक कही है जैसे रुमेटोड आर्थराइटिस, एसएली, फुल फॉर्मिस, सिस्टमिक, फर्स्ट में ल्यूपस, सॉरी, इमिंस इरिडेमेटोसस, दिस इस फुल फॉर्म ऑफ एसएली, मल्टीपल स्क्लेरोसिस, व्हिच अफेक्ट द नर्वस सिस्टम so these are the autoimmune disorders autoimmune disorders that means the disorders which are produced due to a effect of immune system on our own cell or when immune system destroy its own cell and the diseases which are produced they are called as autoimmune disorders and these are the examples of autoimmune disorder so this phenomenon is called as autoimmunity though it's a very short topic but it can be asked in two more autoimmunity
okay so what is our auto immunity usually the immune system can easily identify difference between a self and foreign but due to some genetic reason or the unknown reason it cannot able to identify difference between a self and foreign does not able to identify the difference okay and it starts attacking own cell our own cell or self cell and destroy our own organs such kind of a phenomena is called as autoimmunity and the disorders which occurs due to autoimmunity they are called as autoimmune disorders like these are the examples rheumatoid arthritis systemic lupus erythematosus and multiple sclerosis they are the examples of autoimmune disorders okay so that is about the autoimmunity okay and now we are moving ahead with the last part of today's session that is immune systems in our body we have learned the many system from 11th and 12th we have learned digestive system respiratory system uh, excretory system nervous system endocrine system reproductive system and many more we have learned in the 11th and the 12th similarly this also form one of the system that is what we call it as immune system so what are the organs of this immune system or what are the components of this immune system that we will discuss in this that is an immune system in our body like for example digestive system includes or what are the organs of digestive system mouth esophagus stomach intestine i am just saying a few names okay similarly what are the components of immune system okay so the immune system that includes uh bone marrow thymus lymphoid organs these are the lymphoid organs uh lymphoid or lymph nodes lymphoid tissues and many more like spleen and bear spleen and so on okay so what it includes in general if you want to say that then it includes just remove that lymphoid organs lymph nodes lymph tissues and the lymph cells they form the immune system okay this lymphoid organs we classify them so it will be a lot easier for you this lymphoid organs are classified into two okay first is called as primary lymphoid organs and the another one is secondary lymphoid organ Okay. So, which are the primary lymphoid organ? That is, bone marrow, and second one is thymus. These are primary lymphoid organs. So that's why I have deleted from over here. Okay, they are the primary lymphoid organs, bone marrow and the thymus. We just more properly classify. And the secondary lymphoid organ that includes uh, spleen, lymph nodes. or pears patches pears patches which is usually found into an intestine and the appendix they are the secondary lymphoid organs okay and they all together constitute the immune system in our body okay so what are primary lymphoid organs primary lymphoid organs are the organs of lymphatic systems or you can say they are the organs where the maturation of immune cell takes place that means a maturation of lymphocyte takes place maturation of lymphocyte takes place they are called as primary lymphoid organs okay bone marrow they is responsible for the maturation of b lymphocyte that's why we are giving the name b b lymphocyte because the maturation of such kind of a cells they takes place in bone marrow b from bone marrow and the another type of a lymphocyte which matures in a thymus glands they are called as t lymphocyte because here this t denotes for thymus okay you we have already you already know it there are two type of a lymphocytes 
B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes. Okay, and these are the sites where maturation of the lymphocyte takes place, the kind of immune cells. In a bone marrow, the cells which are mature, they are called as B lymphocytes. In the thymus, the cells which mature, they are called as T lymphocytes. Even the bone marrow is a site where the production of the all kind of a blood cells takes place. The bone marrow can also produce the RBCs and even the platelets and even all types of WBCs are produced by bone marrow. But it is also a site for maturation of B lymphocyte. And thymus is a site for maturation of T lymphocyte. Okay? This thymus gland, we have already learned it. The thymus gland in the 11th standard that is present in the chest nearer to a heart, uh, sorry, nearer to a heart on the dorsal surface of aorta that is present what we call it as thymus gland. The thymus gland is most active during the childhood. As the age advances, the size of this thymus gland is decreasing. And so obviously its activity is also decreasing. Okay? So this is called as primary lymphocytes. Once the cell becomes a mature, either in bone marrow or the thymus, they are presented to a secondary lymphoid organs. Okay, and the secondary lymphoid organs are spleen, lymph nodes, Pierce patches, and others. The spleen is a lobe organ and it acts as a filter. Act as a filter. Filter for antigen. So it filters because it is also a reservoir of erythrocytes and RBCs. It filters the antigens or the pathogens that is present in the blood and it prevents a spread of that pathogens into a body. Okay, so this is a secondary lymphoid organ. Once it is mature, these cells are represented to a secondary lymphoid organ where it can detect the antigen and kills them. And spleen is one of the organs that can act as a filter. Lymph nodes, even the tonsils, okay, they also help in the capturing that pathogens and with that protect you against it. One more important part that is the lymphoid tissues, tissues, okay, that is usually found into, you have to remember because this is a important, the lymphoid tissues that is found into a gastrointestinal tract, respiratory system, and genito-urinary system. The mucosa of this gastrointestinal system, respiratory system and the genito-urinary system, it contains, the mucosa of it contains a specific kind of a lymphoid tissue, what we call it as MOD. Full form is mucosa, M for mucosa, A for associated L for lymphoid tissue. Okay, mucosa associated lymphoid tissue, and that makes 50 percentage of the lymphoid tissues in our body. And where it is found? They are found in the mucosa of gastrointestinal system, respiratory system, and genitourinary system. Okay, so that's all about the immune system in our body. Okay, the primary lymphoid organs are bone marrow and thymus. Secondary lymphoid organs are spleen, tonsils. I just have one more in tonsils. Okay, mm -hmm. lymph nodes, Pierce patches. Okay, Pierce patches are found in intestine and appendix. And the most abundant lymphoid tissue is this mold, mucosa associated lymphoid tissue, which form 50% mass of all lymphoid tissues, and they are found in mucosa of gastrointestinal tract, respiratory system and genital urinary system, shortly called as MOD. Okay? So that's all about the immune system existing in our body. So in today's lecture, we have discussed active immunity and passive immunity, vaccination and immunization, allergy, autoimmunity and we have also discussed the immune system in our body. So that's all about the immunity in our body. Okay, so students keep watching, keep learning, don't forget to like and subscribe this channel. Okay, thank you for watching once again. Thank you.